Hello, welcome to Dixie Living Homestead. Today we will be making some delicious sourdough bread bowls. Um, I like to do this in the winter time so that we have something to eat um, for our homeschool lunch. And I often serve it with soup, especially if it's the fall or winter. Our favorite is um, either black bean soup inside them or we like to have broccoli cheese soup inside them. But we're gonna go ahead and work on the sourdough bread bowls right now. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out, um, this is my starter, nice and bubbly and alive. I'm gonna go ahead and measure out and see how much I have. Ideally, I would like it to be about two cups, but I'm not up to there. So, however much I have is, is what I'll use for this recipe today. Um, a lot yesterday to make a big batch of bread. So I always, of course, leave some in there. That way, and there's plenty in there for me to keep it going, and we'll feed that in a little while. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and put it to the side. This is just a simple, simple, basic three ingredient recipe. You could use this for bread, and I often do, but today, like I said, we're just using. Um, we're making sourdough. So it looks like we have about a cup and a half. Let me just make sure that's what it says. Actually one and a fourth. So when I add in the water, I'm only going to add a cup and a fourth of water. If you are an exact recipe kind of person, this will drive you nuts, I know. Sorry, but like I said, ideally I like to start with two cups of starter. That way I know I'll be making um, about eight or two big two pound bread loaves. <clears throat> but I only had about a cup and a quarter, so let me just get this water. Of course, it's filtered. So that it's alive. There's no chlorine or chloramines in it, most of all, and fluoride. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my starter. And these. We're just gonna go ahead and add a few cups at a time of our flour. Oh, what I do want to go ahead and get is the salt. Grab that. If I had two cups of starter that I was starting with, I would use a um, tablespoon and a half of good salt, but um, since I have a little bit less, I'll probably just use one good tablespoon. So, um, you need salt in your bread. It makes it tasty, um, so it doesn't just taste like you're eating flour. Um, also, I, of course, I use the um, pink salt because it still has some of the minerals in it. But we're going to go ahead and add maybe um, three cups to start with. We'll begin to put it together. Usually this um, batch is just too big to do in my mixer. Um, it overflows the mixing bowl and gets up into the paddle and I have to scrape it off. So I'm just gonna do it by hand and knead it by hand. I need the workout. So here we're at four cups, and I'll go ahead and add the fifth cup for sure. Just um, any kind of flour that you choose. Sometimes I do half and half of um, whole wheat and white, but it is unbleached organic flour. Good, that's coming together nicely. Be a little too much, we'll see. Of 
this point, I do think I added just a little too much flour. So I may start working it on the, um, out on my board. Well, see, that's very gummy, so maybe not. Yeah, it is looking a little shaggy in there. I'm going to go ahead. Um, this isn't because it's a little bit dry. This is because this is what I always do. I'm going to go ahead and add a little um, of a dough conditioner. This is completely optional. You do not taste it. You do not smell it but it um, works together with the natural yeast to help give your bread a good rise and a good, good feel. And this is just apple cider vinegar. For the whole thing, I would probably add a tablespoon and a half again. I'm not gonna put in the whole amount that I poured out. And I'm gonna go ahead and start working the dough. I don't know, I think it would benefit from maybe just a little bit more water. So I may, let's see, see if those work in, because it's really nice, it's not sticky, I don't know. I think that'll be good, okay. <clears throat> so we ended up right at, um, I think it was five cups see now my board is ready to be floured and I'm gonna sit here and or stand here and I'm gonna need this for six or seven minutes or until I know that the dough has come together and turned into what I want it to be I will come back to you in just a minute when I'm ready to move to the first rising step. Okay, I'm back. Just about at the end of my timer. I set it for seven minutes. And there it goes. So I'm going to check my dough. See that it's become what I want it to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it in a bowl and cover it let it rise that bowl right there so let me get a cloth I got a clean towel. It says clean. I just don't bleach it. And I'll put it over here and we will put it to the side and let it rise until that doubles and I will bring you back and show you at that time what it looks like. 
All right, I have gone ahead and checked on our sourdough and it definitely has doubled in size and risen in this bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and just check it, make sure, and yes, it is rising. So I'm going to go ahead and get some oil. a little bit of it on the counter here. I'm going to try to scrape this out. sure it doesn't stick. I'm going to kind of shape it into a log. Whatever you like to do, you could do a circle, whatever way you want to um, cut it so that you can divide the bread. And remember we are making, well that is a little fatter, we are making bread bowls. So um, I'm going to do six out of this recipe since it was a little smaller than usual. That one is very big, so you can make a donation. I have, um, of course, gotten out a um, my scale, just my little digital postage scale that I use for my business, and um, I have used that before to measure so that they're all the same size but it doesn't matter and really since I have some little people and big people I kind of just give them one according to whoever it is that's the size that they they get I'm going to sprinkle I have a baking stone and that's what I'm going to use to cook these on um, I'm sprinkling it with just a little bit of um, cornmeal so, and then like you saw, I'm shaping it by pressing, pressing, folding it under until it gets to be a nice ball. There's quite a bit of bubbles in this still. And I'm going to place it on here for its second rise. These um, are rising. I'll keep them covered again with a moist towel. Um, and it is tricky because the dough and the towel like to stick. So but we want to keep these moist while they're rising. So I will check on the towel pretty much more often than I check on the bread since I know that the dough takes a while to rise. <clears throat> yeah, I will probably give this maybe three hours now before I check to see if it's even ready or close to ready. A lot of this still has air in it from its rising. Oh, 
Okay. I also will go ahead and slash these. I'll probably do the cheater's way and use scissors instead of a knife. Take the knife, let's see, it's, I knew it wouldn't be sharp enough for this. I often cheat and do this. I don't know why this one doesn't look as pretty as the rest of them, but there we go. I cut it again. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take the cloth and cover these one more time. It is clean. I just have a lot of tea on it from making kombucha but I don't like to bleach these once I have them. So, And I'll come back in a little bit and we'll look at these and see how much they've risen. Okay, we have now allowed our rolls to rise for the second time. Um, there, of course, it's the first time after we shaped them, but we've allowed them to rise now a second time and we'll check them. Oh yeah, those look great. Great, great, great. Now... What I did mess up on, and I will um, remind you, is that we were supposed to let them rise a second time and then split the tops of them um, so that when they rise while baking that they will um, rise properly. I'm going to just see if there are any of them here that need a little help. I don't think so, though. They're looking pretty good um, as far as still being soft enough to spread from the inside. Now I will take one egg white that I've beaten with about a tablespoon of water and I'm going to brush it on top of each of these and I'll put them in there. go ahead and start the kettle because as these bake we are going to um, allow them to steam in the oven as well. I almost wonder if some of this was um, maybe the cloth was too heavy or maybe having cut them already they didn't do what they usually do in the middle. I'm not sure, but I know they're still going to be delicious, and they're going to come out beautifully. Once the electric kettle stops, I'll show you what we're going to do with that. But here's how they look, getting ready to go in. And you remember we have used no um, commercial yeast to raise this bread. All we used um, was our sourdough starter, um, water, salt, flour, and then you saw me mix in a little bit of vinegar as a dough conditioner. Okay, the oven is ready. It has been preheated to 400 and the electric kettle just went off. 
I do want to go ahead and bake these as is um, just to see if by slicing them too early before the second rise if it got rid of the surface tension that each of the balls of dough needed in order to rise properly um, or if these will now still be okay for baking and for turning into bowls. I can tell you this that they do not look um, as as tall as they usually do when I make them. Um, even though the rest of it has spread, I think the expansion on the top is not there probably because I already cut it and got rid of the surface tension. That's the point of um, shaping the balls so round and pulling them and tucking them underneath. Let me go ahead, like I said, I have an electric kettle with water that um, just came to a boil. I'm going to put it in a pan that's on the very bottom shelf of the oven and I'm going to fill it with um, halfway with water and then I'm going to put this in on the top shelf. It's nice and steamy in there. Okay, I've set the timer now for 30 minutes and we'll go ahead and check on it and see what they look like when they come out. I know I'm excited. The oven just beeped, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and get a first peek at it right with you. Here they are. I think that, like I talked about before, if I had not cut them too early, that would have left the surface tension so that the gases could build up and cause it to rise, but I didn't. But they are still so very nice and crusty. I'm going to sit here and let them um, continue to cool off and we will come back one more time when we're ready to look inside um, and then in another video I'll show you um, how we serve these and how we like to enjoy them. But thanks for coming along with me. I may go ahead and add to the end of this video um, another recipe when they actually turn out as they are supposed to. Some of these are tall enough, but this one, it may not hold um, enough soup, except for, for my little guy. Thanks again for watching Dixie Living Homestead.